In this lesson, we're going to look at how to draw a graph from a table of results. Now we can see here that a student has conducted an experiment to see how the temperature affects the amount of sugar that will dissolve in a cup of tea. Now we have this column here, which is temperature in degrees Celsius, and this is our independent variable. This is the thing that the student actually changed. And if we were to graph this, it would go on to the horizontal axis. The dependent variable, this one here, is the thing that the student will measure, and that goes on the vertical axis. Now when we come to draw these on the graph, we need to decide which way around to orient the paper. We could have it in a landscape orientation or a portrait. And to decide which way around to do it, we actually look at these results here. And we can see that the temperature, the independent variable, the one that's going along the horizontal axis, goes from 0 to 100, and the mass goes from 4 to 160, and would actually do it from 0 to 160. So we do need more room on the vertical axis, so it makes sense to have the paper in this orientation here. Now the first thing I'm going to do is to draw in the horizontal and vertical axes. And I'm going to indicate the positive direction just by popping a little arrowhead on each axis. Now the next thing to do is to decide on the scale to use. So let's look at this independent variable here, and that's going along the horizontal axis. We're going from 0 to 100, and if I look along here, I've got at least 20 squares here. So I'm going to mark off every two squares, and every two squares will represent 10 degrees. So I'll carry on doing that, and we'll come back in a second. And now onto the vertical axis, the dependent variable here, and we're going from 4 to 160, but we'll start at 0. And looking at the number of squares here again, it looks like I can go every two squares being 10. So let me go ahead and mark on each of the two squares, and I'll mark in every 10 grams of sugar as well. So I'll go ahead and do that. Now it's worth making a note at this point that we do not actually just go up in these increments here. So I wouldn't start at 4 and then 30, 60, 98, etc. That's wrong. Each of these increments must be the same. So I'm going from 0 to 10, 10 to 20. Each two squares is worth 10. And the same on this axis here. Each square is worth 5, or each two squares is worth 10. Now the next thing to do is to actually label these axes. And we know the independent variable goes here, so that's the temperature. And the temperature is in degrees centigrade. So we need to include the units as well. So temperature, and in brackets, you just put degrees C. And then we've got the mass of sugar in grams. Let me just go ahead and put that on as well. Okay, so that's both axes labeled. Now the next thing to do is to actually plot the points. And when we're plotting points, we use a small cross. So no dots, we're not drawing a bar chart, we're drawing a line graph. And the line graph, we use little crosses to mark on the points. Now the first point here is zero along the x-axis here, the horizontal axis, and four up. So if I plot that first point in, it's gonna be round about here. So that's the first point, then we've got 20, 30, so 20 along, and 30 up, so that point goes there. We've got 40 and 60, so 40, 60 is here. And we've got 60 and 98, so 98 is there. Then we've got 80 and 120, so 80 and 120. And finally, 100 and 160. Now the next thing we can do is to get a ruler and to actually join these points together. And as you'll see, they don't actually form a single straight line. Just let me go ahead and do that. Now as you can see, the line is not exactly straight from the beginning point to the end point here. There are some little kinks in the line. And that's due to possible errors in the measurements. Now what we can do in cases like this is we can draw what we call a line of best fit. 
which follows the general trend of the data points. Now let me go ahead and draw one in. Now here we can see with this first line, although it's following the general trend of the points, it's not a very accurate line of best fit. All of the points are below the line. Now it does join the first point and the last point, which is what a lot of students would do, but we don't have to do that. The line of best fit does not have to join the first point with the last point. What we're actually looking for is to have an even number of points above and below the line. And the line doesn't actually have to go through any of these particular data points. So let me show you another line, this one here. And here we can clearly see that it is following the general trend of the data points. It's not actually going through the first point or the last. And we do have an even distribution of points above and below the line. So that is a more accurate line of best fit. So we've taken care of scale. We've taken care of the axes and the labeling of the axes. We plotted the actual points along here. And the last thing to do is to actually add a title. Now it seems like a suitable title would be mass of sugar dissolved in a cup of tea at various temperatures. Now just as a little recap, we need to use the acronym SALT as a little reminder. S for scale, make sure your graph is drawn to a suitable scale. Don't have it drawn in a, as a little graph in the, the bottom corner. Axes, make sure you draw your axes correctly. Make sure you L label your axes and include the actual units as well. And T is for your title. With a line graph, remember to plot your points with crosses, joining them with a ruler. And if required, you can draw in a line of best fit.